to defend the mayor, it appears to me to be the way the case is going, is probably not in the best interest of the city of Chattanooga and its taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If anyone else is here to address this issue, if you'll please come and stand here at the podium so we know who's going to be speaking next. Yes, sir, your name and address. Charles Wysong, 6872 Robin Drive. I wonder if I might ask what the position of the city is going to be. Mr. Mann. Councilman Murphy. We talked about it in committee, and essentially, just to be really clear with the public here, it looks like the judge thinks the city is a necessary party. And if we wait to be sued, it's going to slow things down. It won't get resolved on February 10th at the trial court level if we wait to be sued. So by the city coming into the case, we'll be a party, and it can proceed on February 10th if we do it cooperatively. If we don't do it cooperatively, we won't get a decision February 10th. The position, as developed by consensus here in committee in front of the whole public today, was that the city attorney is going to take the position of judge, tell us what the law is. Okay? So that's going to be the position. Yeah, I think when I addressed this over a year ago, my position, I just questioned, I have never known an attorney to take a position where they did not argue for their corporation. And we came out in this last, on the lawsuit before Judge Hollingsworth originally, and then on the appeal, the argument from the city attorney was that we had amended the recall section, but we never adopted it, or never enacted it. Is that correct, Mr. Mann? Not exactly. The position we took was that the charter amendment in 2002 was related to correcting problems in the city charter with respect to the old form of government, the commission form of government, to make all provisions consistent with the council form of government, and that there were no material amendments to the charter other than those necessary to do that. I believe your words to me in the hallway at the appeals was that the city charter, or that particular section of the city charter, had been amended but never enacted. But that being what it is, my question is, why, if the city has already argued that we don't care whether the ordinance is in force or not, then what do you have to lose? Because that was your position in the first go-round. So what does it matter? Why would you argue? You're already willing to accept the maximum damage that could be done to this city, and that is that a section of the charter is now not in force. So I don't know what the argument is. And I would just say to you, I think there's a better use of money. And what are we talking about in terms of money? What are we estimating that this would cost the city? What did the last action cost the city, the involvement in the first go-round? We helped pay for the court reporter. It would be a relatively nominal amount of money. We did have an attorney staff time involved. We did not keep track of that staff time, but there are no out-of-pocket expenses other than payment for a court reporter. I would just ask, in closing, I would just say this. I would hope the city would argue for its own charter. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilman Murphy, your light is on. Do you want to wait? Okay. And we have one more speaker. Your name and address, and you'll have three minutes. Mark West, 2315 Heavenly View Drive. I appreciate you allowing me to talk. I apologize for my attire. I didn't have a chance to run home and change before I came here, so hopefully you'll forgive me. I respect each one of you. I wrote some comments here, so I don't want to miss any of them, so I'm going to read several of them here and quote an article from the newspaper or from WRCB-TV, some of y'all's quotes from a few months ago. It's interesting and concerning, at the very least, that the judge in this matter felt it important to research whether the city should be involved in the case, yet found it unnecessary to explore whether the citizens 
council members are accountable to defend and enforce the city charter as well as to the voters who elected them. So it's concerning that the city council would consider engaging council who has previously stood against the city charter. Let me read a quote to you from WRCB-TV in which several of you were quoted just in November. It states, Mr. Attorney McMahon says, I'm not going to be able to serve two masters. Under the charter, McMahon is answerable to the mayor and to the city council. Presumably, the mayor and city council may end up on the opposite sides of the question, McMahon explains. Ladd says most council members see an obvious conflict of interest. We'll be discussing whether we need to see outside council or, excuse me, outside council at our meetings next week. So to me, the answer that, or the question that some of the other gentlemen have raised is very clear to me. We have a city attorney that is conflicted. He represents both the mayor and the city council. And I don't know when the mayor is clearly, we know what his position is in this matter, how the city attorney can go before the judge and not potentially be conflicted in this matter. Now, why is it that a year and a half ago the city attorney concerned about the authority of our city charter, and yet that assertion led to no urgency to determine if the charter was in fact enforced by the same attorney and even this council. But now that the will of the voters is on the verge of being affirmed, the establishment elite, from the judiciary to the council and to the mayor, are willing to consider any action or strategy to snuff out the voice of the people. This is not only troubling, but more importantly raises serious doubts about the intent, integrity, and transparency of some involved in this entire matter. I would assert that your vote may be contrary to the will of the people, but ultimately it is contrary to yourselves, because I would assert that the rights we are requesting that you honor and protect are actually your rights as well. Okay, thank you, sir. Just 30 seconds more, please. Can you wrap? Less than 30. Yes. Just wrap your last comment. Your status as city council member is certainly a privileged one, but someday you will once again join our ranks, the ranks of we the people. So perhaps then you will appreciate and value the rights afforded to ordinary citizens in the city charter. Okay, thank you, sir. So the words of the council. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Gilbert. One thing, perception is always a problem, not reality, but perception. And that's one of the reasons why I've said that we should hire an outside attorney because of perception. Not saying we might do one way or the other, but just the perception itself. But since we took the census and they disagree with that, that's the reason why I have to go know of this ordinance because of that reason. Okay, Councilman Murphy, you've had your line on patiently. Do you wish to speak now? Yeah, just very briefly. We discussed advocating for the charter vis-a-vis the conflict or apparent conflict or potential conflict that it may be preempted by state law. The reality is the trial court judge seems to be telegraphing that we need to be in the case. If we don't go into the case in one form or another, it is going to delay the resolution of this matter. And I strongly suspect that everyone who signed a recall petition does not want any more delay. They want this resolved. And I also strongly suspect that the mayor doesn't want any delay. He wants this matter resolved, whether it's for him or against him. So that's what we're voting on. We're voting to make sure that it's not further delayed. That's the vote. Councilman Vinson. You're not being personally engaged. To back up what you're saying, Mr. Murphy, the sitting judge directed us to get the council and this city represented to the council to get this council represented to the attorney, either going out and spending taxpayers' money or the city attorney. Isn't that correct? He directed us to in order to expedite this case. Is that right? He strongly implicated, did not direct the city to become a party. He told the mayor's council to explain to him why the city wasn't a necessary party by Friday. And the mayor's council feels that it cannot defend not naming the city as a party, the city not being a participant. And this motion will authorize you to answer the judge's request. Yes. Now, to be contrary to this is going to lead to, I think, possible other countersuits and delays. We need to get this issue settled. 
as soon as we can. Some people, I don't want to drag it on forever. I don't think the taxpayers do. This is going along with the sitting judge to, to try to expedite the situation. Councilman McGarry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Although I do agree that the timeliness of this issue is of great importance, I do believe there's even a more important issue at stake here, and that's the issue of how do we, as the city of Chattanooga, enter this lawsuit. As indicated earlier by Councilman Murphy, Judge Hollingsworth has telegraphed, for lack of a better word, his intentions, and I do believe it's in our best interest as a city to enter this lawsuit. But I have great difficulty with entering this lawsuit with our hands tied behind our back, simply saying to the judge, tell us what our own charter means or whether or not it's legal. I believe we, as a council, have taken an oath to uphold the state constitution. Shall our charter be any less? Why should we simply say, tell us what it means? I believe our position should be firm. Let's say this was the state constitution. Would we want the federal judge to go in and tell us, tell us what our own state constitution means? I think we would go in with a different approach. I've said also, and I think we do a grave disservice to Mr. McMahon. I believe his comments were honest. He is in a conflicted situation, and I believe as a council, we can avoid all traces of impropriety by hiring an outside council. By hiring an outside council, we also free ourselves up to take the position that I believe we should take, and that's simply, we believe our charter is law unless it is in any way superseded by the state. And that should be our position going into this case. If we've been asked to enter this lawsuit, we did not volunteer. If we've been asked, I think we should go in with a true representation that we have been elected to represent the will of the people of the city of Chattanooga, not on the recall vis-a-vis the mayor, but the recall petition, the recall language as is in our charter. And I believe that's an honorable way to uphold our responsibility. Council on Burrs. You know, we've been discussing this a lot. I'll answer a couple of questions that maybe weren't answered clearly and good points that were brought up. Number one, what is the cost to the taxpayers if, and that was a good question, if our city attorney represents the issue, there's no cost to the taxpayers because, well, there's a fee of some, a court reporter fee, there isn't. There would be great cost to the taxpayers if we hired outside counsel. That's just one issue that goes in there. I've given this an awful lot of thought, and I think we need to bring closure to it one way or the other, no matter which way it goes. I don't know whether the charter is correct or not. What's in the charter is not something that I participated in putting in there. However, I do think that a way to go in is at this point, since all the arguments have made pro and con, is to intervene in neutrally, saying, tell us what it means. If we went in taking a position, the judge would still tell us what it means by saying you're wrong or whatever. So I'm thinking that if we go in this time intervening, what we do is we get the result I think you guys are talking about, or we go in standing firm and go down one way or the other. However, I think it brings a closure to the matter, and I think not to go in means that we don't address the charter matters. I don't know which way it's going to go, but I do know we need to bring closure. And Jim, you brought up something really interesting, and that's about the citizens. Why haven't the citizens been asked to intervene? Is that something that you all would contemplate, and do you think you should? Well, I think it's sort of irregular for a judge to invite people into a lawsuit, whether he's inviting the city or the people in the recall, but I would think it would be doubly odd that he would invite one party in and not invite the other. Are you guys considering doing that? We're considering a lot of things. Okay. Because, I mean, you brought up some really good points, and I think whatever happens, no matter whose favor, we need to reach closure to it. That's what I think. Otherwise, as Peter said very clearly, it's going to drag on forever, and I think that's not something that anybody wants. So that was just, you know. Let me answer that. I just think it would be odd to invite the citizens in and not the city. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. We have your case.
just sure. don't see how you can possibly send an attorney to court and not support the city charter. It is our charter, and I believe you've all taken an oath to uphold the city charter. And what Charlie said about what Mr. Mann said in the hallway was correct. And taking a non-decisive point of view where you don't know if there's a charter or not, or if it's been enacted or if it's valid, is really not the way the council should go. It is a valid city charter. It was voted on by the council in 2002. It was passed by all the citizens of Chattanooga. And that's the point that the council should have, to support your city charter. So if we go in to support the city charter, or we go in saying, I mean, it's a given we support the city charter. We've done that in the past. So what I'm saying is, if you go in this time, do you get any different, as a practical matter, just go with me for a minute, and I'm hearing you. As a practical matter, if you go in supporting the city charter, or you go in impliedly supporting the city charter, no argument saying, tell us which is right, doesn't that bring closure to the matter either way? And don't you get the same result? Well, the judge has already ruled against the city charter, and his opinion has been voided by the appellate court completely. Correct. And to have him essentially say he's going to change his mind on it is what I hear you asking me the question of. And to go and not give him a point of view, is to argue a point of view that the city charter is valid, is not really to take a position. And I would fail to understand why you would send an attorney to the court to not take a position. Exactly. And Mr. Mann has said he's conflicted on it already, even though we have emails from him saying that he felt the city charter was valid before we did the recall, and during the recall. And of course, the mayor never objected at any point during the recall to anything we were doing, whether it be collecting signatures, or the dates, or the fact that there was a city charter, which required a substantially lower number than the state. It was only after the recall was essentially approved by the election commission that he had a question. So you're saying it would be a different result if we went in saying we still believe in the city charter? Sure. I'm saying that we have a city charter, that you're sworn to uphold the city charter, that if you're going to go to court, you have to take a position, not just send an attorney in there to say hi. Council won't stop. And it will, it will take some time. I don't think Mr. Mann is working for free. Excuse me. Council won't stop. Mr. Faulkner is correct. You know, it boggles my mind that we could have a city attorney that is conflicted, that has already made a decision about his personal feelings about this, and that we would send him to represent us in this matter when we are conflicted. I mean, that makes really no sense. We did, the city council, in fact, some of the members here tonight on city council approved this. They voted for this. The mayor himself was on city council and he voted for it. He led the review of this very document. Mr. McMahon helped write this document that is now the subject of controversy. And now what we're proposing is to send him in and essentially say, well, you know, how does he, how does he present that? How do you present that? How, I don't think he, well, I mean, obviously he's going to try, but it's counterintuitive to what a normal, rational plan would be for a city council. And for that reason, I don't think we should intervene. And by the way, the reason that the city council is on the hook is because the mayor's attorney is going to sue the city council. That's right. That's right. You know, that's a terrible situation to be in. And the thought that it would even happen is, is mind boggling. We didn't create the people, the people that are, that signed the recall didn't create this problem. And we have a charter. It was adopted. It was affirmed by the people. And we're going to have to live with the consequences of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
and and we need to not be a part of this lawsuit or if we are we need an independent counsel someone that didn't write the document someone that hasn't already stated an opinion real quickly two quick points number one for this council I'm seeking to be an advocate for our city attorney for this council to continue to suggest that Mike McMahon should represent this body if indeed we are to intervene in this lawsuit to me either smacks of insensitive insensitivity or ignorance and I praise the former and not the latter the public looks at us to make a decision on their behalf and when we ignore our own city attorney saying he's conflicted and send him in anyway I wonder how we justify that I sincerely wonder that number two council members I wonder by asking if we enter into this lawsuit essentially saying tell us what it means versus with a harder position if we end up with the same result I think we may be asking the wrong question the question is not will the judge give us a different result so it's not a question of the court of law I think it's a question of the court of public opinion it's a question of the people who elected us what are we saying to them by going into a lawsuit with our hands open saying simply tell us what it means when we as a body have said we are called to interpret excuse me not to interpret but to create the laws that govern this city I just don't understand why we have to resort to that position it seems to me the obvious first decision is to defend our city charter and only if you can show that there is if there is a reason not to defend it then and only then do you move to the tell us what it means but I have yet to hear a reason as to why we don't defend our city charter and I would hope you would address that in your response sure okay do you want me to respond okay then mr. Benson let me move your light to council members and let's let's let this wrap this discussion because I have a call to go okay council members I think we've already stated that position as I understand it we have a record that already stands in the in defense of our city charter okay all I'm saying is if the judge wants us to be there intervening doesn't mean we're coming in totally cold if he wants us to be there we've already stated all this I didn't hear from mr. McMahon today that he would be Mike forgive me but the discussion has taken a totally different turn tonight than what you stated and what mr. Murphy said earlier so go further with that as city attorney I work at the will of the council and the council directs the litigation and there are nine members of the city council so in all is an all practical matter five members of the city council direct my activities as an attorney it's my understanding from the three o'clock committee meeting that five members of the city council wanted me to go in and basically take the position before the court that pursuant that we yes we understand that we are a proper party in this case and yes we understand that there is a conflict between section 3.18 and section 2-5-151 and we are here to hear the decision of the court on that matter to be bound thereby okay I have one statement that I need to address during mr. West comments I was quoted and mr. West I can tell you that the question that I answered on television is not the question that I have before me today the question that I was asked at the time was a totally different situation I was asked what would the council do if we need to call the if the recall meant that immediately right then that the mayor was being called and ousted and I said at that time I think we would have to have outside counsel that I do believe that it would have been a conflict for our city attorney to counsel us on a correct direction at that time that was the question in front of me on that day the question in front of me today is a very different question so a lot of times an answer that fits a question can't be taken and used as an answer to any question we want to put to it so I was taken out of context in your discussion this evening and I just want to set the record straight 
And in that case, I'm being true to myself. Okay. We have had a motion and a second to approve. Donna, wasn't my light on? Councilman Benson, I asked you if you were giving your time up for Councilman Burson. You said yes, that you wanted her to ask. No, I was saying yes, I wanted to talk. I have three people who have asked to call for the question. Are we ready to move forward? How many on council want to move forward on call for the question? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's call for the question. A motion and a second. And council, excuse me. Now this is to approve this resolution. That's my understanding of the motion we had in front of us. A motion and a second to approve. To approve this resolution. And we definitely want a roll call on this one. Okay. Councilman Benson. It's to approve the attorney representing us trying to seek the truth in what we do. That's what I wanted to say. Okay. Okay, so you're a yes. Jack, are you a councilman? Yes, I'm a yes. Councilman Gilbert. Councilwoman Burr. Yes. Councilman Rico. Yes. Councilman McGarry. No. Councilman Murphy. Four. Councilwoman Scott. No. Councilwoman Robinson. Yes. And Chairman Pius. Yes. One, two, three. We've got six yeses and three noes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you.